from After Dark World Headquarters. This is your favorite correspondent, KD, and another edition of KD After Dark. Good morning. A chilly, dark morning. Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. I just have to go back to him again. Pissing in the Snow by the man, Vance Randolph. The name of this one is No Use to Ruin the Blind. Told by Ross Coleman, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, November 1953. He heard it near Green Forest, Arkansas, about 1910. One time there was a woman that had a good home and a baby and a new piano. But another fella used to lay up with her while her husband was away. She told him to rattle the window blind. And if the coast was clear, she would get up and let him in. Well, one night, the woman and her man was a setting by the fire. And the window blind began to rattle. She was afraid he might be suspicious of something because there was no wind blowing. So the woman jumped up and began to play the piano, and then she sung out. No use to rattle the blind. No use to rattle the blind. The baby's a-sleepin', its father's a-weepin'. No use to rattle the blind. The woman's husband wasn't such a fool as them people thought. And he saw how things was all right. Get your ass out of the way, says he, and he pushed her off the piano stool. Then he began to pound on the keys like a cyclone's a-coming, and he sang out. No use to rattle the blind. No use to rattle the blind. The babies are sucking. I'll do my own fucking. No use to rattle the blind. Ah. Him and her just sat there and looked at each other after that. But there wasn't nary a word spoke. The window blind didn't rattle no more either. Some folks say that fellow that done it was so scared he run clear out of the country and never did come back to the house where they had the new piano. Do I have to tell you how great this book is? You know, because that's the guy that did it right there. Mr. Vance Randolph. I was doing a little research the other day, and I wanted to read you something that I found. Got to pull it up right fast on my tablet. Okay. If I can find it, I'll find it. I know it's here. Yep, right here it is. We're looking at the NWA official rules for 1975. Sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance. Major rule change for 75. The count on the floor is no longer 20, but is changed to a 10 count. The rule went into effect August 11th, 1973. Intentional striking of referee will result in an automatic disqualification or suspension. Number one, no hair pulling. Well, you know. My grandmother, who was... A Mark Deluxe would lose her freaking mind when she saw some heel pulling on her boy's hair 
that boy being Mr. Johnny Weaver. Eye gouging, strangle holes are biting. Well, Weaver had his damn Weaver lock. But as you know, Baron Von Reschke said, that's a motherfucking choke. No straight punches or kicks with points of toe. Well, they weren't enforcing that rule too much later because a little, I mean, much, they weren't enforcing that rule very much either is what I'm trying to say because there was a sod called Thunderfoot, but there were guys before him. But the one I remember was Thunderfoot who would bang the heel of his toe and kick the load down in the shoe and fuck somebody up with that shoe. Didn't need a point of a toe, just a wrestling boot with a hunk of lead in it. Note, contestants who repeatedly violate any of the above rules will be disqualified. The following violations are automatic disqualifications. Throw an opponent over the top rope. Karate thrust to the throat. I saw the Jap Japanese wrestlers get uh, suspended several times for that karate chop to the throat. The pile driver hold. Never saw a pile driver on television. That was one of the biggies, no pile driver, but they said every once in a while they some sod would pile drive at a house show. Failure to break an illegal hold before a referee's five count. Use of any foreign object. Well, they didn't enforce that too much either. Inter in any interference with the duties of a referee. Continuing to abuse a defeated opponent. That was half the fun. And, and any interference by managers, seconds, or corner men, they didn't enforce that one too much. Tag team save rule. Automatic disqualification when one team member saves another or any sure pinning or submission combination more than once. No intentional punching or kicking in the groin or kidney area. The following moves are legal. Judo tops, forearm blows, bolo punches, I have no idea what that is, and flat of foot kicks. The use of ropes to gain leverage. What the fuck? That's Tully Blanchard's half of his gimmick. <laughs> Contestants may spring against ropes as in tackles and other such maneuvers providing the contact with the rope is momentary. It is legal to continue wrestling your opponent until he is clearly entangled in ropes and referee calls for break. Wrestlers caution to protect themselves on the breaks. Additional, contestants will get a 10 count on the apron of the ring or 10 count on the floor. Championships cannot change hands when the victory is gained by disqualification or count out. I think that rule has been around and never changed since the beginning. In any situation not covered by these rules, the NWA will honor the judgment and discretion of the appointed referee. Well, I don't guess Danny Davis ever worked for him. $50 reward for information leading to the arrest and convictions of persons throwing objects in the arenas during wrestling matches. The proceeding was from a 1975 issue of Mad Atlantic Wrestling Magazine. Well, that was the good old days that changed. If you didn't like that, Ruby, get back to the hills. Perhaps you'll like this. Colon cleanser. I found this somewhere. I don't remember where. And... It almost looks like hot sauce or something. <laughs> People say our new and improved and natural colon cleanser, hot sauce. Oh, that's the gimmick. Works better than the original formula. They say that it cures the common cold and the flu. An old man said he ate some with his eggs and he remembered the name of his wife. I'll say this as nicely as I can. I wouldn't get out of the 
motherfucking electric chair to eat this shit. But I like keeping the bottle around. If you didn't like that, perhaps you'll like this. Deep Throat, the novel. Yes, I've got my hands on a copy. On page 14, she tried to pull her gaze away from the scene, but her attention was drawn to Jose's head. She could feel her own long fingers sliding through his black, greasy hair as Helen's fingers were doing. She ran her hands down on her thighs, caressing the velvety skin under her dress ever so lightly. Somewhere deep inside herself, she felt a faint warming tingle which she attempted to smother with conversation. I went into one shop, you know, Hester's Beachwear for some beach towels, and I was so dizzy, I let the woman sell me a bathing suit. I don't even remember what it looks like now. Why don't you try it on, said Helen. I'm sure Jose wouldn't mind. And would you hand me one of my cigarettes, love? Linda reached for her Virginia Slims pack and passed a cigarette to her roommate. Helen lit and blew out the first puff of smoke at the delivery boy's buried head. Do you mind if I smoke while you eat? She asked him. Jose looked up like a puppy who had been interrupted at dinner. No, not at all, he mumbled muffedly. Helen pushed his head down again, throwing her head back as her tongue touched the most sensitive thrill spot she possessed. Linda watched greedily as her roommate exhibited the signs of passion she had observed so many times before. The closed eyes, the outthrust tongue, the arched body, the secret little glistening smile of a woman well satisfied. Deep throat. And remember, Linda Lovelace is deep throat. Or was in deep throat. Last, but certainly not least, I have acquired some of these early 70s great letters books and I found another one. Letters to the Happy Hooker. And the only thing I can say about this book is I don't believe it. All right, so the Happy Hooker was a woman who ran a brothel in New York City and became famous and wrote a book which was prior to this one, and here are some of the letters she has received. My luscious savior. Hi, how's the most succulent world... <laughs> Hi, how is the most succulent woman in the world doing? I sincerely hope with all my heart you don't mind me writing you so often. To be quite truthful, I think, no, I know I have a crush on you and am mad about your body and you, Savior. If given the chance, I would try to be anything you wanted me to be. Anything from a mad fucker to a crazy pussy and tit eater. Yes, anything. You can depend on me being your complete slave and your every wish would be my command. However, I would not be a passive slave, nor would I 
delight in taking a spoon because I thought it would please you and eating your shit. To me, this would be degrading. And I'm sure if we were to engage in these activities, I think we would soon lose all respect for one another. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy doing some things that some might think are kind of far out. Like I would think it would be really exciting laying in the bathtub with you standing over me with your legs spread and taking turns pissing all over me. To me, a well-placed tongue can be much more exciting than any of the things some of the freaks that come to you ask you to do. It sure would be super to have my penis swell up inside of you, make it impossible for us to part. On top of that, if life could be one long orgasm for the both of us, that would be happiness. I know for a fact if my desire to have sex with you could be harnessed, it would be enough power to light a city. Do you think he's laying it on a bit thick here? In my wild, wonderful dreams, I always see us together, naked, me running my tongue and hands gently along the inside of your long, shapely leg, staring at your foot, endlessly at that fascinating, sensitive bridge of skin that connects your vagina, that's the hillbilly thing, your vagina with your anus. Also, darling, I sometimes see myself standing directly behind you, kissing the soft cheeks of your bottom and running my tongue along the length of your crack of your buttocks with my organ erect and against your rump and one hand on each of your perfect tits as you bending over so as to better accommodate the entry of my penis into your anus as I enter. Ever so slowly and my cock gets accustomed to the depths of your rectum. Your hips begin to go in a spasmodic motion as you begin to quiver and moan and softly the moans of pleasure and delight. I ejaculate, filling your soft, warm ass with my hot, sticky semen. Have to be running, you beautiful cunt, you. A true romantic here. Be good, ha ha, and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Think of me when you climax and have an orgasm. Right, as I am hard and waiting. With all my love, name withheld, Council Bluffs, Iowa. The only thing I can say about that letter is, damn. Well, we've went from wrestling rules to love, lust, and ecstasy in one beautiful long edition today. I have 37 subscribers now. Could you help me out? This show's getting way too good just to have 37 subscribers. I need one more. How about 38? Can you help me out? I know you will. So, for Mr. and Ms. America, all ships at sea and all sods everywhere, this is your favorite correspondent, KD, reminding you Get shit done. Remember discipline equals freedom. Remember that it's always good to be nice until it's time not to be nice. Be kind to animals. 
get shit done. Never complain and never explain. All that and more will be coming along in the next great morning report from your favorite correspondent. So I say, get your ass out of bed. You don't have to leap or fly out of bed. Crawl out of bed if you have to. Get a cup of coffee. And get shit done. So as we wander the earth getting into adventures, I hope to see you all very soon. Have a great day, everyone.